Welcome to Through the Bible. Today our teacher, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, continues our amazing study of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm Steve Schwetz, and I'm inviting you to hop aboard the Bible bus and find your spot in God's Word. And as you do, let's welcome Through the Bible's President Greg Harris to the studio today. Greg, as always, it's great to see you. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate you inviting me to sit down with our listening family, and it's always uh, a joy. Yeah, and this particular session, we want to focus on listener letters and then the stories that they send in, and yes. maybe the stories that aren't sent in, That's the right. one that yeah. got away. Yeah, we're not going to make you feel guilty, but we're going to encourage you to tell your story because your story needs to be told. It does, and we know that so many people learn so much, and I know most of you, well, I probably don't know most of you, but I, I view <laughs> people listening as you know, like I listen as I commute to my office, mm-hmm. um, I'm in my car and I'm listening. And so many times through Dr. McGee's teaching, God's word, the Holy Spirit has such an impact on my life. And to be able to tell somebody about it. And by the time you get out of the car, you know, you yes. you, you take it yeah. to your heart, but you don't necessarily share yeah. it. And so we would encourage you, especially in the practical book of Ephesians, as mm. we're closing that out, that maybe you just take a, a, a minute to uh, you don't have to write a letter. There's mm-hmm. all this social media stuff yeah. that you yeah. can express what you've learned. <laughs> learned in the book of Ephesians. <laughs> or you can email us at biblebus at ttb.org. As you said, go on Facebook, post something, or call our uh, phone number, 1-800-65-BIBLE, and select the option that says you can leave a message for us. And a, a gentleman recently did that, and we want to share that story with you. We think you'll be very encouraged. Yes, my name is Louis Burrell. And I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I've been on the Bible bus since 1986. And this is my first time um, calling in with a testimony or even I have never even wrote a letter to my shame. But I just wanted to testify that uh, it's been a real blessing to me. And I'm on the prayer, the, the world prayer chain, and that's really been a blessing to me. It it just lets me know that uh, many people are continuously coming to Christ. And so that just makes me want to give more to through the Bible um, on a monthly basis because I know where the money is going. And also we know that God's work is being done and many people are coming to Christ. So I just want to say thank you for the work you guys do. And I listen to you guys uh, twice a day. I listen on WFUR. And then I have you in my um, app, the app I listen at night when I got time to grab a Bible and just listen and sit there and listen and open up the Bible. And that's at night, so I usually listen to you twice a day. And I always grab something, hear something that I missed the first time. And with the Bible open, it's just much more meaningful to me. God bless you guys, and thank you for the work you guys do. Love you in Christ. Steve, what a what a great example of why we do yeah. what we do, and I, and I'm thinking, uh, as I listen to Lewis, and thank you, Lewis, for calling in and sharing that. I'm thinking there's so many good things that happen when we tell our story. First, the Lord gets glory, mm-hmm. which we know is is what all of yep. this is about. Yep. Everything we do is about the glory of the Lord. Secondly, the believers get edified. Mm-hmm. All of us who listen are encouraged to say, wow, I can I can grow in my faith. Mm-hmm. And then third, and, and we're not saying we have to have this, but those of us that offer this teaching to you, that work hard to offer to you and people in 120 plus languages around the world, it gives us a renewed zeal to yeah. say, yes, we need to keep yeah. going. And the fact that Lewis is on the world prayer team. And I yeah. think about the fact that, you know, here we've been riding the Bible bus. Lewis preceded me in 86, so 32 years he's been yeah. on the bus. And I just think about what about the time when we're going to be glory and we're all going to get to be together 
and I would think of almost like a, a sub party in heaven where, okay, the world prayer <laughs> yeah. team is meeting at four o'clock in, you know, this section and we can meet each other yeah. and, uh, and, and, and give glory to God the way he, he used this ministry and his word in all of our lives. And also, Steve, you think of that wonderful verse, uh, faith comes by hearing and mm-hmm. hearing by the word of God. Mm-hmm. And I think when you hear a testimony like that and you hear how listening twice a day yeah. has changed this man's life, it reminds you in your own Christian walk and me mm-hmm. in my own Christian walk, we need to be hearing the word yeah. of God. And I always try to read the passage, obviously, before mm-hmm. and after, but to have the word of God, and I can't always do it because I'm driving. Yeah, I was about to point that Although out. Although I can I'm put glad it in self-driving yeah. mode maybe, but, yes. you know, I <laughs> get a self-driving car, but um, to have the Word of God open in front of you as Dr. McGee is teaching is also an added benefit. I know a lot of, yes. of, of you listeners do that as well. And so just before we pray, we just want to say, please tell us your story. It, it's not just uh, an exercise in futility. It, it will benefit so many people, and maybe we'll be able to share it with the millions who listen to Through the Bible. It certainly will encourage us, and I think it will encourage you just to give praise to God. Absolutely. So let's pray as we begin our program. Heavenly Father, thank you for the encouraging uh, response that we got from Lewis. I pray that you would teach each one of us exactly what we need to hear, that the Holy Spirit would use your word uh, to bring glory to you in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now here's Through the Bible with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Now we return today to the sixth chapter, and we're putting in at this very important 13th verse. But again, I would like to say we're in this chapter, the last chapter of Ephesians, that speaks of the church as a soldier of Jesus Christ and that the individual believer should be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And we're told here what we are to do as soldiers. And it actually begins way back with that husband-wife relationship. When a couple are spirit-filled, they can know what real marital love is. And it's never a question of a woman dominating a man or a man dominating a woman but that the man occupy his rightful place, which is he is the aggressor always in every relationship, even the physical relationship. And therefore, he is the instigator and the beginner, and she's merely to respond. And the interesting thing about this woman, Abigail, is she couldn't respond to a fool, especially in the action. And actually, his own wife saved his life at this time because David would have killed him had it not been for Abigail's intervention. So that she, I would say, was a good wife. And there's many a time that a wife has to take the lead in the home. I know many homes that are like that. I don't think it's always ideal, but sometimes the woman is the dominant member of it. And a wise woman will push her husband out front and make him think that he's running everything at least. And I think that's always a wise thing to do. Now, you move from that to the fact that the little one in the home is to be trained for soldier service, and it's the parents that are to teach him to obey. And then we saw the relationship between master and servant, capital and labor, if you please. Now, the battle is on, and the first thing that we saw, the enemy was located and identified. And that enemy is a spiritual enemy. It is Satan who heads up his demonic minions, a great host that are today arrayed against God and the children of God down here. And we need to recognize that that's where the battle is. Today, the church has lost sight of the spiritual battle. And we feel like that if we have a lovely church building, and that if we have good crowds, and if the finances are coming in, that means everything is just doing nicely. And friends, that's not where the battle is fought or lost. Now, that may be an indication of it. When a church begins to get into debt, that's an indication of something wrong farther up, which means there's something wrong spiritually, especially if the church had a reputation of financing itself. Then we find that the battle is arrayed along spiritual lines. 
are the members of the church being built up in the holy faith? Is the Word of God being taught? And is there a spirit of love and cooperation among the members? Is gossip reduced to a minimum? And is the gossip, is he the one that's condemned and not necessarily the woman that uses makeup? And instead of becoming legalistic, we attempt to exercise a right relationship toward those that are brethren in Christ. Now, that's where the battle is. Now, and as a result today, that you find that in some churches there is a spirit of criticism and a bitterness and a hatred, and the Spirit of God is not working there. Oh, I know. They like to talk about numbers. They like to talk about how many decisions they had. But when the facts are really boiled down and examined, and you look at the so-called converts, Two years from that date, you find out they're not there and that they've disappeared. We don't seem to realize that there's a spiritual battle being carried on today and that there is a manifestation even at the present time of demonic power. And many people are being blinded and carried away in all kinds of cults and religions and isms with all kinds of beliefs. And as a result, the Word of God sinks into insignificance and into a minor place, even in many of our churches. My friend, the enemy that we have today is a spiritual enemy. That enemy is Satan and his hosts of demonic power. And that is where the battle is. That's where we need protection today. Now we are told in order to carry on this, we have the soldier's protection and we're told, Wherefore, take up the panoplyon of God, in order that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Put on the armor of God, in order that ye might be able to stand, and that having done all to stand. Now, we've identified the enemy. Now, Paul now begins to identify the arsenal, which is available for defense. Nowhere is the believer urged to attack or advance. The key word in this entire section is this, to stand, stand. That's the important thing. You know, the Scripture speaks of believers as pilgrims. As pilgrims, we are to walk through the world. And as witnesses, we are to go, go to the ends of the earth. As athletes... We're to run. We're to run with our eyes fixed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we are looking under Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that we're to look to when we're athletes. We're to run. But as fighters, we're to stand. And very frankly, I don't think the enemy, friends, is working down on skid row. I don't think that he's out partying Saturday night. I remember years ago when I was active in Youth for Christ as a young preacher, I was out every Saturday night. And we used to say at that time, well, Saturday night's the devil's night. Now we're making it the Lord's night. Well, frankly, I think the devil was home in bed. I think he's resting up so he could come to church the next morning because of the fact that why should he want to fight his crowd? They belong to him. I'm not sure he's proud of them. I think he's ashamed of a lot of these alcoholics and these down-and-outers today and these up-and-outers. He could take no pride in them, but he's out fighting where the spiritual battle is. Personally, I've never felt like that I should carry on that battle. That is, that I should make the attack. You don't have to make the attack. Just stand, because he's going to make the attack. Having done all to do just one thing, to stand. And I've never been enthusiastic when I hear a group of defeated Christians singing, Onward Christian Soldiers Marching As to War. May I say to you, it's more scriptural, I think, for the believer to sing, Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. And I believe today that we need to do some good old-fashioned standing. And very frankly, this is an hour 
But my heart is sad when I look today at a great many churches. Now, some folk could think I'm hard on the local church. I love the local church, and my heart goes out to the local pastors today. They're fighting the battle. Those are the men that are really on the battle front today. I'm for him because he's the one. I happen to know I was a pastor a long time, and I always appreciated those that came in and stood shoulder to shoulder with me at that time. And I see churches that at one time were great churches, and the crowds flocked there. And they're no longer attending today. Attendance is way down. And the interest has gone. And what has happened today in many of these places? Well, I'll tell you what's happened. The members were blind to the fact where the battle was being fought. They thought because the finances came in, they thought because the crowds were there, they were winning the battle. And they themselves were losing it all the time. Oh, the day that we might recognize where it is, and that today the local church might recognize that. How many of you really pray for your pastor on Saturday night? And instead of criticizing him on Sunday, pray for him. He needs your prayers. And you don't need to crucify the man today that's preaching the Word of God. The devil's going to see to that. You don't need to join that crowd You ought to uphold his hands as Moses held up his hands on behalf of Israel. And that's where the problem is today. That is the difficulty in the local church, and my heart goes out to these men today. Now, will you notice, he says here in verse 14, "...stand therefore." My gracious alive, I get the impression that Paul is trying to tell us to stand, and having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparedness or the equipment of the gospel of peace. Now, for the fourth time here, the believers commanded to stand. And this is the only place that I find Paul laying it on the line and speaking like a sergeant and saying in the command, stand before When he opened this section, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, beg of you that you walk worthy. Now, the command comes to us as soldiers, stand. That's the command today. Stand against the wiles of the devil, because he can outwit us unless we have on this armor. And now, will you notice this armor? We're to have our loins girded with truth. And that's very important. In the ancient garment of that day, and for the uniform of the soldier, the girdle about the loins, it held in place every other part of the outfit that you wear. And when you lose the girdle, why, well, to tell the truth, you're losing everything you got, my friend. Your garments fly open and your pants fall down. And I know that comedy is produced, and people laugh when they see a man running or a man fighting, and his trousers begin to droop. Uh, That's supposed to be funny. And a great battle in the past was won by a clever general who had his men go through and with the enemy. The enemy was asleep, and they just went through and ran a knife through the belt of the soldiers. Well, believe me, they were so busy the next morning holding up their trousers. They weren't able to shoot the guns. And this general won the battle because of that. Well, the girdle holds everything in place. And we're to be girded with truth. Now, what is truth? It's the Word of God. Now, there are a great many people today that are given a testimony. I think they ought to sit down. Oh, I am being so ugly. Will you forgive me? But I want to speak that which is in my heart because very candidly, somebody needs to give out the Word of God today, and I want to give it out just as it's written. Now, there are people that are given a testimony, and they've got a thriller. Oh, these football players, these baseball players, these movie stars, these television stars. But you know, they do not know any more about the Bible 
than a goat grazing grass on a hillside. It's totally ignorant. What they need to do is to have their loins girded about with truth. That is the thing they need. They need to know the Word of God. Because some of them are saying some very foolish things. And then every now and then, I could give you the names of a dozen back in my day that have gone off into tangents, into cults and isms, and everything under the sun, and they've really lost their testimony. Why? Well, simply because of the fact their loins were not girded about with truth. And it's important that you have a knowledge, a certain knowledge of the Word of God before you get up publicly and speak to folk. And that's the reason today that many of these testimonies, they're thrillers to hear, but they're coming from folk that are standing there, my friend, and they're about to lose all their spiritual garments, if you want to know the truth. They have to hold them up because they're not girded about with truth, and that is needed today. Now, will you notice that there's something else that we're told here? And I should mention this. Every piece of this armor really speaks of Christ. We're in Christ up there, and we should put him on down here. Paul has already told us that. Put on Christ. And he's the one that's the truth. And you and I should put him on in our lives. And uh, again, may I say this, a testimony that does not glorify Jesus Christ should not be given. And there are too many of them that glorify the individual. I was a great athlete, or I was a great this, that, or somebody else. And I today... I'm turning over my wonderful talent to Jesus. And believe me, he's lucky to have in his crowd because he is not so much and his crowd is not so much. It's wonderful that he has me. My friend, you are lucky if you have him. Let me tell you. And he didn't get very much when he got you and when he got me. And this is a day when the little fella really doesn't have very much to say. You've got to be somebody great in the eyes of the world. We need to have our loins girded about with truth. And Christ is the truth, and truth alone can meet error today. And you have on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, Christ is the righteousness of the believer. And I do think, though, that there is the practical righteousness that is here. The filthy rags of self-righteousness, that doesn't quite make a breastplate. But I do think that underneath that there should be a heart and a conscience that is not disturbing the individual because that he's not right with God, their sin in his life. Only the righteousness of Christ can enable the believer to stand before man and before God. But the heart that's going to be protected should be a heart that's not condemning the individual. The awful thing is is to have sin in the lie and to try to carry on the battle. We'll never win it that way. Now we have our feet shod with the preparedness or the equipment of the gospel of peace. Shoes are necessary to standing, you see. And they speak of the foundation. You've got to have a good, solid foundation. Preparation is foundation. I remember in hand-to-hand combat, we were taught, make sure you get your feet anchored. Well, my friend, is your feet anchored today on the rock? And the gospel is the only way the believer must touch the world. And it's his foundation in this world. And again, Christ is that foundation. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is Jesus Christ. Put on Christ. Oh, how we need him today as we are facing a gainsaying world and also spiritual wickedness in the darkness of this world. For more information on the worldwide ministry of Through the Bible, and to join us as we take God's whole word to his whole world, call us at 1-800-65-BIBLE or visit ttb.org. And as we mentioned earlier, we'd love to hear from you. So why don't you write to BibleBus at ttb.org or the old-fashioned way at Box 7100, Pasadena, California, 91109. And, of course, you can always leave us a message on our Facebook page. Now, let's close with some final thoughts from Dr. McGee. 
Are you resting, Christian, resting in his arms of tender care? that God will meet your situation. Will you trust him? Do you dare? Oh, they seek to overwhelm us, trials sower that wear and tear. But our God is able, willing everything to help us bear. Call upon him. Call upon him. He will hear and answer too. He is one of great compassions, Every morning they are new. Earthly friends are oft unable. Then again they prove untrue. But our God will not forsake us. He will see us safely through. And she bases that on Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Jesus came home, all to be my own. Sin had left a crimson stain. We're so grateful for the faithful and generous support of Through the Bible's partners, who are being used by God to take the whole word to the whole world.